don't you let her get the upper end. Stand up to her. Stay where you are. I'll sit here. Ian, go and get my case off my bed and bring it in here, will you? Yes, Grant. Jill. Yes. Post this letter to Ethel for me, will you? Yes, Grant. Here you go, Grant. Thank you, Ian. We'll start with you, shall we, Ian? I think you're a bit of a fool, if you really want my opinion. You've got no direction in your life. You start all this city and guilds business for your catering, and then you chuck it all out the window. There it went. Your parents gave up a hell of a lot so you could do that course, and how do you repay them? You start up a disco business. More money, is that it? Well, money ain't all that important. You'll find that out one day. Do you know, I think I know why you threw in the towel. You'll know that expression, being an ex-boxer. Cos you couldn't stand being ribbed by your mates. Cooking. Well, not very manly, is it? A real man would have stuck it out and stood up to them. You don't have to prove you're a man. You should know. You're a present looking there and you've got a nice personality. So do something with it. Sit down and write a list. Write out all the things you want to achieve, your ambitions, and plan how you're going to get them, and then stick to it. Now, will you? I'm asking you, not your dad. You've got to stand on your own two feet, not his. Well? Yes, Grant. For you. Thanks, Grant. Chell. Well, what a mess you've made. Can't even bring me great-granddaughter to see me. In the old days, your behaviour would have brought shame on this family. Pregnant while you're still at school. Can't even bring the culprit to face the music or his responsibilities. Lead a young, sensitive lad up the garden path and finally to the altar. And all in the name of Miss Independence. Oh, no. Michelle Fowler can't be like her mother and her mother before her. No, that's not good enough for her. She wants her independence. Well, let me tell you, miss, that you mistake independence for self-centeredness. You've grown up too quickly and you've grown too selfish. You're all take and me and I. You don't give. If you're not careful, you want to watch it because you're going to end up a very lonely old spinster. There's an old word for you. It's almost as old-fashioned as maiden aunt. I want you to start thinking of others. You're all emotion and no thought. You've got a good head on your shoulder, so you should be able to do it. And you brought up Vicky well. I want you to start thinking of others for a change. Especially your mother. Understand? Yes, Gran. It'll come in handy. Thank you. You're all right, Cathy, when you stay ordinary. Don't get airy-fairy ideas above your station. 
start your own business, join the Samaritans. When you stop being ordinary, you open yourself up to all kinds of trouble. The less said about that, the better. Sometimes you bring it on yourself. Ordinary people are the salt of the earth in a place like this. We've had too many hanges in Walford. And you spend more time with your husband. You don't see half enough of each other. Yours is an ordinary, decent marriage. And I want it to stay that way. We want to have one successful relationship in Walford. So work at it as a favour to me. Right, Mum. They're not plastic. Thanks, Mum. You want to get her pregnant if you want my opinion. She could do with another baby to keep her at home where she ought to be spending more of her time. And you ought to be stricter with Ian and not try and make him in a cardboard copy of yourself. It's because of you that he's got no direction. You want to get your head down out of the clouds and stop dreaming and start learning to put up with what you've got because you've got more than most. You've got a wife with her head screwed on right you got a son you could be proud of, and you're working. I want you to be the man of the house, the head of the family. You're old and ugly enough to do it. Stand up to her a bit more. It was your dad's. Hello. Seems right somehow that today of all days you should lose your job again. Now listen, Mum. Sit I'm... down, Arthur. No one interrupts Lou Beale in midstream. Your son's a bad lad. Do you want your daughter to go the same way? Do you want all your family to be failures? I expect you've thought all these years that the old bags had it in for you that I hated you. Well, you'd be wrong. Nothing personal, Arthur. As a matter of fact, I quite like you. You're loyal. You used to be a trier. You stick by your wife. And basically, you've got a heart of gold. But you always need to kick up the backside, something which I've made my life's work. So, pull your socks up, eh? It was Albert's. It's about gardening. Thanks, Mum. Well, you've got the lot, haven't you? I'm surprised your shoulders haven't buckled with the weight resting on them. They broke the mould when they made you. The last of the line, where we all come from. I don't know how you do it. Working, looking after this lot, looking after me. And yet I've never heard you complain. Maybe you do it when I go to bed. You've got one fault. You keep too many secrets. Don't use what you know to take it out on other people. You only cause chaos. Either spill the beans or forget you ever heard anything about it. I think you'll be able to cope. You've done bloody well up till now. You could try smartening yourself up a bit and a smile now and again wouldn't come amiss. And you've got to let yourself go occasionally. Otherwise, you'll get old before you need to. Make sense? Yes, Mum. Thanks. I'd like you to add this. I couldn't, Mum. I don't need a piece of metal to remind me I was once married.
Right. That's you lot sorted out. I can go now. <laughs>